Well, good morning, Sanctuary family. Today's the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Because if you have surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, He's not just Savior, but He is your King, then you are a member of God's royal family, and that's something to celebrate. Not everybody can say that. Amen? And the kingdom of God is our hope and our future. That's the greatest news. That is the great news of the gospel. It's the gospel of the kingdom. And that's why we've been uh, studying in depth about this kingdom that we are inheriting. This is the gospel. It isn't that we just escape hell, that we have our ticket to ride, but that we have an eternal hope. We will inherit the king, kingdom of God. Not We have inherited it, but we will also inherit a new heaven, a new earth. I mean, it's ours for all of eternity. And that is so awesome. But we need to know what this kingdom is like. And that's what we've been studying for several weeks. Um, we learned that, first of all, Jesus is the king of the kingdom. He's also the lawgiver. They're laws. They're not, they're, they're laws. They're commandments. They are not suggestions. They're his laws. And he is also the one who will judge us according to his truth and his righteousness. We've also learned, well, and if you've been saved by the blood of the lamb, when you stand before the judge, he's going to declare you innocent. Hallelujah. No matter how wicked we were, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Jesus took not only our guilt, but the punishment for all of our sins. And that is so awesome. Hallelujah. Man, we just quit right there. <laughs> But we also learned in the last few weeks that we have to learn to put our trust in God in every area of our lives, especially in the area of finances, because that really says it all. You cannot serve both God and money. And so we learned that Jesus, God is our Jehovah Jireh. It's one of his names and the name means he is our provider. God, our provider. He provides for his children way better than we can. And we learn that as we place our trust in him for all of our provision, then we become, the evidence that you really trust him is you become a frivolous giver. It's fun to give. It is so much fun. It's way better than getting. It's, that's why Jesus said, more blessed to give than to receive. More happy. And it is so true. Man, we got a bunch of sourpuss Christians because they're stingy and they haven't learned how to trust God financially, so they're not frivolous givers. Well, the great news is once you've learned to place your trust in God financially, then and you become a frivolous giver, well, we reap what we sow, so you keep on reaping a harvest of financial wealth so you can continue to give out of that wealth that God has given us to meet the needs of other people. Now, we could just stop right there and just have a great time, go have lunch, but not. we're not going to do that. If you were here, were not here for those teachings, uh, please go to our YouTube channel. Even if you were, go to our YouTube channel. It's called Sanctuary Church of Jacksonville. And please like it, like, hit the like button. And then share it with your friends on social media or send an email or a text. Just send the message out because in that, in doing so, you're preaching the kingdom of God, which is what we were commanded to do. Today, we're going to talk about another aspect of God's kingdom, and that's his language. See, every single person on the, on the planet has a native language, a language that is native to their home country. For instance, in Spain, Colombia, Venezuela, Mexico, Mexico, La Ciudad de Mexico, they speak España, see, <laughs> they speak Spanish. And, you know, you go to Mozambique, Brazil, and Portugal, they speak Portuguese. And in France, they speak French. Quebec, they speak French. We speak English. This is our native language. We are born into the country and through childhood, we are learning how to speak our native language. And so when you're born into the kingdom of God, you have to learn a new language. You're a baby Christian. You get born of the spirit. You're a baby Christian. You got to learn how to speak the native language of God's kingdom. He has a native language. So we're going to learn about that as it is described in the word of God. So let's start with the fact that one of the basic needs of humanity is the, the need to communicate. And first with our creator and then with each other. So the need to understand and to be understood is critical to the emotional well-being of every human being ever since the creation of Adam and Eve. And so to meet this need, God gave man 
what no animal, and we're not animals, by the way, com contrary to what you learned in high school, we are not animals. We are not part of the animal kingdom. We are unique creatures created in God's own image. So even there, there's a lie from the pit of hell. Amen. God gave us something the animals don't have. And it's a language. Oh, but the whales communicate. Well, they may. And, bar and you know, dogs bark and cow uh, cows moo and chickens cluck, whatever they do. But it is not a language. Hello. Written language, written or spoken language includes words that are an expression. They're containers of expression. They express what's in a person's heart. And because God created man in his own image, language came with the package. Since God's word was from the beginning an expression of who he is. That's right. John 1, 1 and 2 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Man, the whole gospel, the book of John, first book in the New Testament begins with the word. God's word is holy because he is holy. If it's a reflection of who he is, then his word is holy because God is holy. His word is perfect because God is perfect. His word is truth. Because God is truth and he cannot lie. He cannot lie. God's word is fully trustworthy because God is fully faithful. Amen. Psalm 18 verse 30 says, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. You ever heard of a flawless diamond? If you can find one, they're very rare, very expensive. Psalm 33 verse 4 tells us, for the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. God is faithful. God's word is also spirit. You've heard of the Holy Spirit? Well, Psalm 33 verse 6 tells us, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host, by the breath of his mouth. The Holy Spirit is considered the breath of God. You don't become a born-again Christian until God, the Holy Spirit, God breathes into you his breath of life. And that is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Ephesians 6, 17 tells us, take up the helmet of salvation, which is the mind of Christ, by the way, and the sword of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, which is the Word of God. So we know that God's Word is Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. So God's desire from the beginning was that man would be able to commune with him in the most intimate way. God's Holy Spirit communing with man's spirit. That wasn't possible after the fall of man. And language is simply a tool that is used to connect God's heart to man's heart. That's a primary purpose of language. Language words are containers. Like this contains water. Words contain love that ex is expressed from one person to another. I wish I could have had two glasses of water just to show you and demonstrate what God's plan was. It's like there's two glasses of water and it's all love and it's going back and forth through this tube to each other. That's what God gave us language for is to love on him. And, be, and through that love with him, we're able to love one another. So language is, this is what language is for you that don't, I didn't get it the first time. It is a collection of words that contain meaning. It, it is also a means of expression of the inner spirit of man and God. That's really what the purpose of language was. But along with the great fall of man came the perverse use of language. When Adam and Eve fell, bam. Language is now perverted. And the simple reason is this. In Matthew 12, verse 33 through 37, it says, Make a tree good, and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized... By its fruit. You brood of vipers. Jesus is speaking to a bunch of Pharisees. The religious leaders. Who all looked holy and perfect. 
He calls them a brood of vipers, snakes. How can you who are evil say anything good? For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that men will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. That's a powerful statement. You say you're a Christian. You say you're a child of God. But you're going to be acquitted. That means pronounced not guilty. Or you're going to be condemned. That means you are guilty in danger of hell's fire by our words. Why? Because it's out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. You know what's in a person's heart? By what they say on a regular basis. Psalm 5 verse 8 and 9 says, Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make straight your way before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with destruction. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongue they speak deceit. An evil man is going to have deceit in his heart. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to lie, lie, lie. Psalm 58, 1 through 4 tells us. Why do you boast of evil, you mighty man? Why do you boast all day long, you who are a disgrace in the eyes of God? You look all powerful and tough to the rest of the world. But to God, you're a disgrace. Your tongue. Here's why. Here's why. Your tongue plots destruction. It is like a sharpened razor. You who practice deceit. You love evil rather than good. Falsehood rather than speaking the truth. You love every harmful word. You deceitful, deceitful tongue. So man's word has been perverted since the fall of man. Because man's heart is perverted. And un saved unregenerated man's heart is perverted his word is not reliable because fallen man is not faithful if you're expecting a person who's not a true lover of God not just a professing Christian people there's lots of people 80% of the people in the church are unsaved estimated they may think they are but there's no fruit so it's anyone who's not truly born of the Spirit of God. He's not going to be faithful. Period. His word is deceitful because his heart is full of deceit. And so the languages of the world have been used to plot evil, to lie, to slander, destroy, gossip, fake news, wars. All of it comes from the deceit of the human heart. So we can see in Genesis, in the book of Genesis, chapter 11, there's a story that unfolds concerning the building of the city and the tower of Babel, or Babel. At this point, mankind has joined forces in rebellion against God. They come together in rebellion against God, and a common language is utilized. There was only one language at that time, and that common language was used to elevate man above God. Doesn't that sound like Satan? Lucifer, he wanted to be enthroned above the throne of God. Well, man has the man is in cahoots with the devil. So instead of giving praise to their creator, man uses his language to dis, to uh, devise wickedness in rebellion against God. That's found in Genesis eleven one through four. It says this: Now the whole world, whole world, had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, eastward, they found a plain in Shinar, or Shinar, and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. First of all, the God always said use stone. They decided to use bricks. Okay, anything that, the, and you see, what, unless God builds a house, man labors in vain. 
those bricks are nowhere to be found today. They just dissolve. But he says, they say, let's use brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. A name for ourselves. We just sang, your name is highest, Jesus, the name that is highest. The, the name that is above all names. But they want their name above that. You see, this is what, when men want power and prestige, what is it they want? They want their name above the name of Jesus. And guess what? They lose in the end. There's no other name but the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, you know, they come, they want to have their own name. They want to be famous. That's why all these movie stars, they sell their soul to Satan to get power and position. Anyway, and they said, and not to be scattered all over the face of the earth. I want to bring this up. Jesus told the, the, in the garden, Adam and Eve, I want you to, what did he say? Subdue the earth, the whole earth. Adam, and when, when the flood came and Noah gets off the boat, God tells Noah, subdue the earth, go out there, garden, farm, take care of my planet, not just pieces of it, the whole earth, the whole earth. Anything contrary to that is from hell, from Satan. They don't want to be scattered over the face of the whole world. They've decided to be in rebellion against God. It's all rebellion. And because anything is possible for those in unity, God himself confused the languages, and <laughs> scattered them all over the whole world. Hallelujah. God is bigger than they are. Genesis 11, 5 through 9 tells, but the Lord came down to see the city hmm, and the tower that the men were building. Hmm. The Lord said, hmm, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over all the earth and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. And that is why you have hundreds of languages all over the earth. And so the kingdoms of this world, since the scattering of the peoples from Babel or Babel, each with their own language and against the will of God, have sought to unite the world under their own authority. The desire of Satan through man is to take over the world through man. See? It's been his will since the beginning is to rule the world which God created for himself, for his purposes. And it's been the catalyst for every war, for famines and plagues and every kind of calamity throughout the ages. And it will continue until the great appearing of Christ at the end of the great tribulation. Hallelujah. So when we look at what's going on in the world today, the new world order, now it's the world of economic Forum, and you've got the World Health Organization. I mean, they are all seeking to destroy the sovereignty of nations, including our own, so that we are under the government of Satan himself. There is nothing good coming from these organizations. The, the, the uh, United Nations, evil beyond words. It is a seat of Satan. So... But that's what the world, that this is what mankind has desired throughout the ages because they don't want to answer to God. And they're going to get what they want eventually. They're going to get it to their own destruction. Revelation 13 verse 5 through 8 tells us what's going to happen. The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise his authority for 42 months, which is three and a half years. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. He was given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. And he was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. 
all those whose names have not been written in the book of life belonging to the Lamb or the Lamb's book of life. The Lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. So that's what we see going on in the world today. We see it a culmination of mankind through 6,000 years of history coming together under one world government and eventually one man who will eventually be actually inhabited by Satan, Lucifer, Lucifer himself. So, but we have good news. The gospel is great news. Amen. Amen. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ defeated Satan and ushered into the world the kingdom of God. Because of his obedience to God the Father, God's kingdom, his word, and his language came to earth. John 1.14 says, the word, capital W, became flesh and made his dwelling among us. That's Jesus. Jesus is, as we said, words are vessels that express what's in a person's heart. God's word, his word, is an, a vessel that expresses who he is. So when the word came, became flesh and came to earth, it says in John 14, 9 through 10, Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. John 12, 49 and 50 says, For I did not speak of my own accord, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. John 8, 28 says, So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. So Jesus only spoke what his Father taught him to speak, and we're supposed to follow in his example, in his footsteps. People, as Christians... 1 Peter 2, 19 through 23 says, For it is commendable if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he's conscious of God. In other words, if it, it's commendable if you suffer because you are a Christian. But if you suffer for doing good and endure it, this is commendable before God. Because this is to what you were called. Because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example. Jesus is our example that you should follow in his, in his footsteps. To this you were called. Amen. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. So Jesus tells us in Matthew 10, verse 19 and 20, but when I, he says this, but when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. Again, those same words, what to say and how to say it. There's a way to say something. And that, at that time, you will be given what, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking. But it will be the Holy Spirit of your Father speaking through you. We all need to surrender our tongue to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you that's one reason why people cannot receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues. Because you must release your tongue to the power of the Holy Spirit. People rely on their intellect. The Bible says don't lean on your own intellect. Your own uh, intellect. He says but trust in God. Just, oh, just surrender. Surrender. We sang, I surrender. I surrender. Surrender your tongue. Amen. Hallelujah. 
as children of God and his citizens of his kingdom, we've been given the truth of God's word. That's in John 17, verse 14 through 18. It says, I have given them your word. Jesus says this. I have given, uh, he's given us his word. And the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. If you're a Christian, you're not a part of this world. You're a new creation. You're here as an ambassador of the kingdom. That's why we're still here. We are ambassadors of Christ, ambassadors of his kingdom, but we are not of this world. We're no longer citizens of this world. We're aliens in this world. And he said, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of this world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. You want to know what truth is? It's not found on CNN, not even Fox News. Every bit of it is lies. And any born-again Christian that sits and watches their, listens to their lies is not hearing the voice of God. I'm sorry. Whose voice are you listening to? You cannot have that going in your brain, in your heart. Say, so, as citizens of God's kingdom, we can clearly communicate with our Father in heaven. And we can understand the heart of his word. I'm going to tell you this is real serious. John 8, 42 through 47 says, Jesus said to them, talking to the, again, to the religious leaders, talking to those high and mighty religious leaders, those who thought they were better than everybody else. He says to them, if God were your father, you would love me. By the way, Amen. biggest question in your life today is not when did you get baptized? It is, do you love God? Do you love Jesus? When he asked Peter, do you love me? Of course you know I love you, Lord. Every one of us has a call on our lives. Do you love him? Enough to lay down your agenda to do what he tells you to do? It, it, that is the evidence that you love God. The evidence, I mean, that you're a true Christian. You love God. I'm talking, you love God. You really love God. You're crazy about him. That's the evidence. And out of that love, you obey him. If you, so he's telling these religious leaders, the 80% of people sitting in church today, if God were your father, you would love me. Jesus says, for I came from God and now I'm here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Hmm. Why do you have to have a man interpret God's word for you? Ask that. Well, everybody's interpretation is different. Oh, yeah, every man's interpretation is different. But there's only one Holy Spirit, and he's not going to tell you one thing and me something else. So who are you hearing from? You can't know what the Word says if you don't have the Holy Spirit within you because he's our teacher. He's the interpreter of the Word. So when people used to say to me, we you know... Uh, I've got to have somebody interpret this for me. No, you don't. Not if you're a child of God. The reason you can't understand it because you're not a child of God. You're still a citizen of this kingdom and you don't know the native language of God's kingdom. Yep. He says, if God were your father, you would love me for I came from God and now I'm here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you're unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning. Not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar. And the father of lies, when you're sitting in front of a boob tube watching CNN, NBC, CB, blunt, all, the def, all of it, you're listening to Fauci, you're listening to all these liars, you're listening to Satan, you're listening to the devil. He's the father of lies. That's all they do. They don't know any other language. He's, they're speaking their native language. Lies, deceit, deception. But Jesus says, 
Yet because I tell you the truth, you don't believe me. Can you, any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I'm telling the truth, why don't you believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. I'm sorry, people. We got to pl quit playing games in the church. Do you know why this world is where it is today? It's because with every drop of innocent blood, it empowers the gods, the idols, the Molech, the, the demonic demons. It gives them power. There's power in the blood. There was power in the blood of Jesus to defeat Satan. But the power of innocent babies, innocent children, gives demons power. I have to preach on that one day. So, you know, who do you believe? the reason is you don't hear what God says because you don't belong to God. That's what Jesus says. But God, Jesus told us what we're to do. Colossians 3, verse 5 through 10 tells us, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Yes, people, God is a loving God. That's why he sent Jesus. But the wrath of God is on its way, people, and it's coming soon. You used to walk in these ways, the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed in, not in the knowledge and the image of its creator, we are being renewed into the image of our creator. He made us into his own. He created man in his own image. Our purpose in life is not to be happy. It is to be holy because God is holy. You know what's in your heart by what you talk about, how you talk, how you treat people. So like Jesus, we're called to be oracles of God. You know what an oracle is? It's someone who speaks on behalf of somebody else. It's like God spoke one time through a donkey. And that's why he can talk through me. Because he can use anybody who's willing, even you. But we're called to be oracles of God on the earth. His mouthpiece to proclaim one thing, his kingdom. Second Samuel 23, verse 1 and 2 tells us, these are the last words of King David. These are the last words. You know, you know the last word usually is on your deathbed. Those are pretty important words. Right? Somebody's dying. Last thing he says before he's gone. And this is what David said. The oracle of David, son of Jesse. The oracle of the man exalted by the Most High. The man anointed by the God of Jacob. Israel's singer of songs, he says this. This is his last words. The Spirit of the Lord spoke through me. His word was on my tongue. Hallelujah. Can we say that? Can we say that the Spirit of the Lord spoke through me? His word was on my tongue. Ephesians 6, 19 and 20 says, pray also for me. Paul, the apostle says that whenever I open my mouth, Paul says, words may be given to me so that I may will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. He's in chains. He's an ambassador of Christ, imprisoned. Pray for me. So when I speak, I speak God's word and it opens up the mysteries of the gospel to those who listen and hear. That should be our prayer as well. That wherever we go, whatever we're doing, God will use us to be his messenger of peace. Amen. So as citizens of God's kingdom, we are supposed to be filled with thanksgiving and praise for our king and redeemer, for everything he's done for us. And out of our, the abundance of our hearts, our words come forth with a new purpose. There's a new purpose for our lives. 
Psalm 71 verse 8 says, My mouth is filled with your praise, O God, declaring your splendor all day long. Psalm 89, 1, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. Do y'all ever sing to the Lord? You don't have to be in church to sing. One time, Steve and I, Dwight and Rose, and me and Steve, we're out down in Pantagonia, in the point of Chile, or down there where the penguins are. We're walking through these trails of wilderness, and I'm singing praises to God because we're to praise Him always, all the time. Steve couldn't be, he said, man, that's pretty awesome. You're out here. Nobody's, nobody can hear it. Ah, he can. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, he said, uh, Psalm 145, verse 21, my mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. So we should be continually giving God praise. And like Jesus, our words should be a blessing to other people. Our words have power. Blessing and curses is in the power of the tongue. As a born-again child of God, our words have won. We, have, we sing praises to God. We worship Him. We tell Him how much we love Him. We talk to Him. But then God uses us to bless other people with our words. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 15, 4. The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life. We can bring healing to the brokenhearted. We can even speak healing over people who are suffering physical ailments. Our tongue has power. Psalm 49, 3 says, My mouth will speak words of wisdom. The utterance from my heart will give understanding. People need wisdom from those who've walked this walk. God has given us the wisdom of his word, and we need to be available for that. Matthew 8, 16 says, When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, Jesus, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. We have the power to drive out demons, especially if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Before the service started, I was praying in tongues. I was praying in tongues while y'all were singing because I know that for me to speak God's word, I've got to be filled up with him. And the, 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 the gift of tongues is a gift that empowers us to do the impossible. The impossible. I've never known anyone who was not baptized in the Holy Spirit who ever spoke to a, a demonic situation and they were, it worked. Can't. They don't even have the faith to believe it. Or to heal the sick. We've seen miracles. We've seen miracles in our lives. Because we have the gift of the Holy Spirit. But you got to want it. Before you can get it. Anyway. As his disciples. As his disciples. We are to guard our hearts from all. That would pollute and pervert our language. Proverbs 4 verse 23 tells us. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Whatever you look at, whatever you listen to, these R-rated, X-rated, pornography, all that mess is going into your heart. It is perverting your heart. When you watch these fake news, these demon-possessed people speaking to you as if they are God, they are not. And unless they repent, they will end up in the fires of hell for eternity. So... Why are you listening to them? You're perverting your heart. When you allow an offense to take hold in your heart and you refuse to forgive immediately, you're allowing bitterness to enter your heart and it will affect your life. It's the wellspring of life. Your heart is. James 3, 9 through 12 says, With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. It should not be. You can't come to church on Sunday and praise the Lord and go home and yell and scream at your wife and curse them or husband. James 3, 9 and 12 says, did I just read that? Okay, James 1, 26. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a rein on his tongue, he deceives himself. And his religion is worthless. This is good. This is good. <laughs> it's worthless. If you cannot control your tongue, what's coming out of your mouth. Listen, you want to know how to control your mouth? Get rid of all the crud in your heart. Amen. Oh, that's a good word. That is a good word, folks. 
It is. Because it's out of the abundance of the heart. It's kind of like you got pus in there. You squeeze a pimple to get the pus out and pressure comes your way. And guess what happens? All that stuff comes flowing out of your mouth. Get rid of it. Fill yourself with the love of God. Fill yourself with truth and righteousness. Fill yourself with the word of God. Fill yourself with God's love so that you can love other people even when they are aggravating, irritating, whatever. God's plan is that all of the citizens of his kingdom be of one heart, one mind, one voice, and one day, one song. Romans 15, verse 4, 5, and 6 says, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth, one heart and mouth, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, man in rebellion against God is using their one mouth, their one voice. They're coming into agreement, people. They're coming into agreement against everything that is holy, everything that is perfect, everything that is pure, coming against God Almighty and little babies and children for their purpose and for their own glory. God's plan is that we come together in unity. One heart. We love each other. We love each other. It starts with your spouse, your family members, the people in this church. We love one another. In spite of our frailties, we're all a work in progress. We're all a work in progress. Together we come and we worship him. Not with a polluted heart but a heart that loves God more than life itself. And as we do, we glorify our Father in heaven, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I came that you may know the Father. God wants you to know him. You get to know him when you get to know Jesus through his word. Let's go, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, I just love you so much. Father, I just, if I could just take out all the love that's in my heart for you and just pour it out like a river in this place, I would do it, Lord. But it's only by your spirit that a heart, a human heart that's been so perverted by the world can be changed and transformed into one that is holy and pure and undefiled. Father God, it's your Holy Spirit who brings conviction of sin. It's your Holy Spirit who brings repentance. It's your Holy Spirit who breathes new life into us, transforming us from a citizen of this evil and corrupt, perishing world to a citizen of your kingdom, your eternal kingdom that will last forever. It's only by your spirit that our hearts and our minds are transformed into the image of our loving creator, oh God. Take hold of our hearts. Bring us to that place of truly total surrender. I surrender all, Lord. All that I am, all that I have. For your purpose, God. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do, God. I, that's why I'd rely on you to guide and direct my steps. We're all in that place, God, of utter dependence upon you. So, Father, we pray that your word would bear much fruit in our hearts, in our lives today. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, we love you, Lord. Let your kingdom kingdom come. May the king of the kingdom sit on the throne of our hearts and rule and reign and govern every thought, word, and deed that our lives would bring glory 
to our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.